My name is Teresa Lockwood. I reside in Violet, New Jersey. Ooh, this says I have 20 minutes. <clears throat> Going to record a William Clay who basically showing some sadism um, to justify his psychopathic um, um, abuse towards people. Um, it has nothing to do with God, by the way. And he, as he's sitting there making up these things, <clears throat> um, mocking prayer, somebody prays for God to relieve pain. I, I I don't really I don't really pray like that um or get you out of a situation. <laughs> Look, <laughs> um, I I believe this is a thing. He actually stole by teaching a prayer. Actually, I told it on my police page and my regular. <clears throat> timeline uh facebook page um in regards to um uh prayer and to prayers to ask uh god for guidance and wisdom knowledge and understanding um <clears throat> to um take action okay um in your everyday life, and there was like these false ideas about prayer and faith and all these other things. <clears throat> so the thing is, is <clears throat> he has many false ideas about faith, by the way. So um, he presents faith falsely. I actually heard him actually describe faith accurately um, about uh, many months ago, <clears throat> maybe six months to a year ago. I'm not sure exactly when. Um, but it wasn't when he defined faith, it was in his set another section. So, but the thing is, is that he apparently <clears throat> quotes from other people. So, um, he actually quotes from a lot of false theologians who aren't really theologians, obviously. <clears throat> false, um, Christians. Um, so the thing is, is, um, he basically makes a claim that, um, uh, if we don't have pain, we won't, like, um, let me, let me just record his own words, because, um, I don't have much time. The time I have a problem in my life, and I'd be rescued from it. And that's really all about who? Me. Every time I got pain in my life, I'm, a I'm asking God to release me from my pain. That's all about who? What if God is the one causing your pain? What if the pain is there for a reason because he's trying to purify you and your faith? And see, the one thing about us as Western culture believing people, and that is, is that we believe our number one option in life is to avoid pain at all costs. Pain is the great purifier. Without pain, we wouldn't even need God. Lies. If you had no pain and everything was going good in your life and there never was a problem, honestly, how much would you call out to God? Look at that smile. He's sick. Sickening. But when you feel pain and you want pain to stop, where do you run? Remember, I just, I, I don't know if you remember this or not, but in the book of Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes about the thorn in his flesh. God, not Satan, God put a thorn into the flesh of Paul. Now, he never said what it was. And the whole purpose of the thorn in the flesh was to keep Paul humble. That if Paul had not this thorn in the flesh, Paul would have become elated and proud and arrogant and self-centered. Three times Paul asked for the thorn to be taken. Three times the thorn remained. God gave him an answer. I'm just wondering, church, the pain in your life, is it your thorn? And no matter how much you pray, God's never taken it away. Because he knows without that thorn, you're going to go off down a road that's going to destroy your life. And I'm just wondering today, church, have you praised God for your thorn? Have you praised him today for the pain in your life? No, see, because our prayer is all about release me from pain. Take away my pain. 
and my team. Okay, <clears throat> so first of all, from this, let me just record this real quick. Okay, it's all right, five minutes. <laughs> I'm thinking it was longer than that. All right, so um, I'm actually making this right now. Um, faith is not a guessing game of the what ifs. Okay, uh, with prejudice, pre-assumptions as to say, what if that was God? Or maybe that was God trying to tell me something. I hear that a lot, a lot. Um, <clears throat> heard that a lot throughout the years. Um, it confuses me, actually. I just, um, I'm going to go on. Or claiming something is of God's will that is not of God's will. Humble faith is speaking and acting by what we know is right. And if we do not know, we ask God in humble faith to know what God's will is, and in faith, we will know. Okay? So, I don't have a right, to, I don't have a space to write the rest. I mean, I can make that smaller, I guess. I'm just going to write uh, more on that. And, um, <clears throat> faith is knowing. So, um, you know, um, and, I mean, he goes off on his pulpit, whatever, his podium, his whatever, place and goes on to <clears throat> to know that I know that I know that I know it's got annoying so um the thing is is that um he has actually had several different false uh, interpretation about the passage like Paul's thorn in his side let's put it this way though this guy has basically caused me pain and suffering and trauma um for about almost 20 years okay so <clears throat> and destroyed my family from that or whatever and um i assure you it's not god's will so this guy he claims to basically he said god speaks to him like moses be i mean like god spoke to moses this is not true yes i can say that um, no, it will not be the same thesis there and claims that God has not spoken to me or teaches me or whatever. This is a little game that they play. Um, I've showed evidence, um, of what God has given me that I gave to all of humanity in which I was persecuted for. So, um, the thing is, no, God does not speak to me. Like, God spoke to Moses. I'm going to say that. Um, <clears throat> so the thing is, is that um, they have condemned anybody who basically uh, claims that they hear God's voice audibly, that um, they need mental help. This is what they said. And claim that, um, uh, yeah, they basically slandered the prophets. <clears throat> um who basically is described written in scripture that God uh, spoke to them audibly. So, and then they made up these things, these lies, and said, oh yeah, well, the prophets today are different from the Bible, the prophets in the Bible. Well, actually, the prophets of the day, of these churches, the false prophets that they listen to are very descriptive of the false prophets and the false prophecies of all of these churches. Um from the Pentecostals and all of them, very, very descriptive, um, and speaks against them as false. So, uh, me being a prophet of God, um, I line up the word of God, but the thing is, they do not know that, they do not know the word of God, but they have attacked me of any light that has come from me that exposes them. So, um, they are enemies of God, and uh, it's really, really disturbing. The thing is, the situation with faith, um, uh, faith is, um, let me just, faith is basically, it gives a witness by what you know. Jesus said, I speak what I know, what I have seen. Now, just because somebody says that does not mean they have. They must have substance. Let me just look it up. It's in Hebrews. They must have substance um, in their claims. Um, let me see. Hebrews. Uh, I've taught this in their church. I was attacked for it. Um, okay. Um... Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um, that was be the spiritual seeing, and basically that 
a contrast between physically sight, physical sight and spiritual sight. So, Edmund says, things not seen, that means physically, for by his elders obtain a good testimony. And good means perfect, pure. Okay, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible, like wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So I've actually used this passage. I actually used it in this church. I was attacked for it. They basically told me that faith is with the, uh, believing without knowing. This is not true. Um, so when I corrected them, I was bullied and um, eventually abused and slandered over it. <laughs> and I was very, very kind um, giving it to them. But they didn't want to be exposed. And they cowardly responded um in this way to basically try to bury me real quickly so <clears throat> they did this many times and i continue to be kind to them they continue to abuse me so i was sam piero and uh the thing is is that um uh so i've used this verse <clears throat> excuse me throughout the years because i find out when i'm encounter when i eventually years down the road encounter atheists that well, I looked it up. I found it later in a dictionary, and I'm just like, that's not true, of course, you know. I cross it out of the dictionary. Faith is clearly described and taught in full substance of what it is um, throughout the Bible. So, <laughs> the thing is, is that um, um, it's clearly defined in detail, okay, throughout Jesus' teachings, um, in parabolic, uh, in literal definition, so, um, very, very descriptive. So, the thing is, is, um, there's no such thing as, like, colloquial, colloquial, colloquial view, um, uh, uh, clo clo oh my gosh, I can't say it, okay, that of neurolinguistics changes and all these other things where, People will, it's like, uh, it's like the Webster's Dictionary, a Calvinist who basically, uh, wrote their own dictionary so they could sit there and, uh, misredefine words, um, to actually destroy, uh, attack Christianity and the Word of God within it. So they continue to do the same thing. A lot of play on words and like, oh, that's what that means. No. So, um, the thing is, is that, um, regardless, you, it, <laughs> defining the word, um, it's important, but, um, you're not going to go to hell for it. Um, the thing is, uh, faith can be described, um, among people. There's a lot of false ideas about what faith is. I'm going to describe them on people because, well, it's spread by, well, brainwashing sin to mislead people. So, you know, you know, the terms like leap of faith, yada, 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 or what have you, but, um, when, uh, Mm, Jesus used the terms, you have little faith, and they're like, you know, why? Okay, it's like, okay, they misinterpret that of, like, you know, um, the fig tree. Um, he has mistaught it wrongly because he does not understand the teachings of Jesus. And a lot of it is used in, 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 uh, in a way where, you know, I will say to this tree, um, um, okay, I'm going to say, I will say to, I'll just say to this mountain, be moved and thrown into the sea. Okay, and that is compared to faith, faith, faith. Um, um, you know what, I'm actually going to, okay, if I focus on it, I'll sit there and read it. Um, because this is where Jesus basically, um, it did not bear fruit, the fig tree. Um, I want to use them. I want to use the mountain one so that I mean, that's where my mind is more than the um, he's used that also. Well, it's like in the same <sighs> I don't know why it's not coming up. I just okay, I did write it right. I'm not sure. All right, so um, well, anyway, it wasn't about the action being done it's about lining up with faith you're uh, lining up with by what you say in relation to the action response okay obviously we can't move literal mountains so um that's not what jesus was saying so um he said you will say 
You see that? So that's the difference between faith, okay? And it does not mean that, you know, if people say something and then, like, prophecy, and then people don't respond to that prophecy, means you didn't have faith. Or people abuse this thing and, and, and falsely told people in these churches and these fraudulent Pentecostals while I was observing their evil false doctrines. They were going, they were telling people if you didn't get healed, uh, healed by the, uh, by them is because you don't have faith. They would intimidate people to, um, like bully people out or whatever if they didn't accept their deceit and their lies and lie along with them. This is basically what it came down to. Or they would invite people who were ill or all these things or whatever and because they were frauds and claimed they had like these faith healers which they don't um, they will basically call people unbelievers they don't follow along or whatever the case may be. So or to claim with intimidation the claim that they're healed or whatever the case may be, okay? So, the thing is, is, um, um, this is what they did. Like, I watched it. It's Chestnut Assembly in Vineland, New Jersey, um, where I see this. Of course, we see this, these manipulation tactics, the same dark principalities played among, you know, these false faith healers online. They're not of faith. Uh, they don't believe in faith. They simply can't start by basically the simple truth as small as a mustard seed. It's simple. Okay, speak what you know, what you not what you don't know. I've been teaching this for years, and this is what I do. And I've actually had people sit there and tell me uh, because I basically corrected them and, and and showed them the light of things. And then because they didn't know what they're talking about, because they're exposed, they don't know what they're talking about. And not only because they just don't know. I don't. I don't. You know. Have I don't get offended because people don't know things. There's a lot of things I don't know. But the thing is, it's just like they were manipulating, deceiving, hoping that, you know, people would just, they would talk just a bunch of uh, manipulative uh, things or whatever to act, to try to appear wise to people. And they speak of things that they don't know. And, and people will be overwhelmed by all these things. Like they're supposed to know these things. And so I found it very, very important that I, you know, I have knowledge that I have. Other people have knowledge that they have. And everybody has a part. We're serving, like, humanity to that um, need for people. And this is why I found it very important to teach that humbleness and faith is standing in truth and, and, and by speaking what you know and not what you don't know. Okay? So, um, you stay away from hypo hypocrisy that way. You know, um... Uh, I mean, I used to there and call people hypocrisy, but I find people like speaking in hypocrisy and they're misled and they don't know. Like I try to teach it, you know, and it's, you know, and how harsh I get all depends on how abusive and, and manipulative and, you know, they get and, uh, um, and attacking because they, there's a lot of people, wicked people out there that just can't, you know, they're just, just manipulating people and trying to deceive people and trying to act like the wise person. It's just like wise is basically just obtaining by what you're given to know. It's okay. I don't know things. I'm not going to know everything. That's ridiculous. Um, so that's what makes everybody individuals. It's like, this is why I, I'm basically drawn to other people, you know, look up things and interested in what other people have to say about things that they know, you know, like the physician, like, I'm not going to sit there and try to obtain, like, you know, the whole, you know, dialect and all these things of a physician or whatever. I find it very interesting. I'm not going to become an expert at it. There's a lot of things that I basically have knowledge of, but, you know, I could become no surgeon, you know. <laughs> so, but, um, uh, and I'm appreciative of people, the things that they know. And because they don't know something that I know and on, on many things, um... That's okay. Um, so people break up at different different positions to basically serve different needs of society. It's a wonderful thing. So um, I don't know how I got into all that, but um, but um, so um, okay. 
Here we go. Uh, so Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, so surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Now, you can sit there and like, Oh, he's speaking metaphorically. Not literally, obviously. He's not speaking literally. Okay, I'm down to the last seconds. So, but the thing is, yes, metaphorically, but it's not talking about the metaphor isn't in the mountain. The, in, in literally metaphorical, um... Jesus is saying to line up what you say, okay, to the gift you've been given. I'm going to end as, as my time is flashing.